Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. I want to talk to you today about some of the developments that we've seen regarding Russia and Russian oil and the effects of the ongoing economic sanctions against Russia. And I've mentioned in previous videos that the real winners of the economic warfare between the West and Russia and the real beneficiaries of the economic sanctions that we've seen imposed on Russia will be countries like India and China who are putting economics ahead of politics and are continuing to make energy purchases from Russia. And we're seeing that now. Uh, here's a headline from oilprice.com that we got Friday. Russia sends record volumes of oil to India and China. And this just goes to show that India and China are more than happy to continue purchasing Russian oil at a significant discount. Here's a chart from Bloomberg of the price of Urals crude versus Brent crude. Now, Brent crude is crude oil that is produced in the North Sea between the UK and Norway, and Urals crude is Russian oil. And you can see that since the conflict kicked off in February, the price of Urals crude has dropped precipitously compared to that Brent crude. And India is really one of the biggest beneficiaries here. Russia has now become one of India's top five oil suppliers. Before the conflict, they were in the number 10 spot but they've actually moved up to the number four position in terms of oil producers that India relies on. And before the conflict, Russia was sending about 66,000 barrels per day of Russian crude oil to India. Now, that number has increased to about 277,000 barrels per day, so more than a fourfold increase. So much so that now the U.S. is sending officials to India to try to convince them to reduce their purchases of oil. But... I don't know. I mean, the U.S. is going to have to provide some kind of incentive to India because that drastic discount that they're getting on crude oil by purchasing from Russia, that could really help their economy and give them a significant advantage in the global economy, something that I've mentioned in the past. Now, it's not that Russia has not been impacted by this at all. Before the conflict, they had about 27 million barrels of Russian crude oil at sea in tankers and floating storage vessels. And now that number has increased to 79 million barrels. So they are seeing inventories build and they are perhaps having some difficulties selling their oil. And so, you know, there will be some impact on Russian revenues by these embargoes. And obviously they're having to sell at a discount. Of course, they're selling at a discount to a greatly inflated global energy price. So they're still going to make their money. But it's not to say that they haven't been disrupted at all. However, really the real losers here I think are the West and they're going to be the ones impacted by the most is now we are contending with record oil prices, uh, skyrocketing diesel fuel costs in the US, record natural gas prices in the EU. And all of these developments are just an example of the deglobalization and the division of the global economy into rival camps. The sort of thing that Zoltan Passar discussed in his document titled Bretton Woods 3. And if you want to know more about that, go check out the video I put out on de-dollarization. I go into that in depth and how the global economy is splitting into these rival camps. I'll put a link down in the description. And unfortunately, all of this, I think, was somewhat predictable. You know, India and China, they've got 2.8 billion people between the two of them, more than a quarter of the world's population. And I don't think that the war in Ukraine is going to be a priority for them. Cheap energy and being able to supply energy to their population is going to take precedence. And I think that we are going to continue to see where people's loyalties really lie and that is to their own self-interest. And the real winners from these sanctions are going to be India and China moving forward. They are going to get a significant competitive advantage in the global economy as a result of this. And likely in the West, we are going to see energy prices continue to move higher. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Will the US envoys to India be able to convince them to stop buying Russian crude oil? Or will India continue to increase imports from Russia? And as for China, you know, I don't really think there's much chance of anybody convincing them to stop buying oil at a discount. So thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Smart Silver Stacker, out.